Security, like privacy, is always, always at war with convenience. You want to be able to get to all of your stuff all the time, as quickly and easily as possible, but you don't want anyone else to get to any of it at all. Ever. The easier you make it for you, though, the easier you make it for them. And the harder you make it for them, the harder you make it for you. Touch ID, Face ID, iCloud Keychain, Autofill. There are tools Apple and others provide to try to better balance security and convenience, but they all have their trade offs. You might think that's just great. You have absolutely nothing to hide on your phone or tablet or computer. So if you can keep casual snoopers out but still get in right quick, so much the better. If that's cool, keep it cool. If you have a real or philosophical need to lock down your tech stronger, better, smarter, longer, if you think your phone is the closest thing to a digital brain, extra cranial storage, and cybernetics that currently exist and should be afforded the same rights against self-incrimination that biological memory enjoys, or if you have medical, legal, clerical, or journalistic information on it that can simply never fall into any unauthorized hands, then I've got a few tips for you. Just to be clear, these aren't privacy tips. I've covered those in a previous video. I'll link to it below. These are security tips. These aren't ways to prevent leaks, but to lock everything down so only you can get to it. Barely. We good? Let's go. Lock it up. Four digit passcodes are like no passcode at all. Six digit passcodes are better, but not significantly. If you want to really lock down your device, use an alphanumeric password. Thanks to Touch ID or Face ID, you won't need to enter it unless you reboot, fail to enter it five times, or don't authenticate for 48 hours. Or, you know, Touch ID or Face ID fails you. You can switch to a password by going to Settings, Touch ID or Face ID and Passcode, change passcode, then you enter your old passcode, then tap passcode options and custom alphanumeric code. Enter your code, fill it with uppercase, lowercase numbers and symbols, and make it as long as you can remember. You'll be entering it often enough that it should become muscle memory for you, and soon, but almost impossible for even one of those code-breaking boxes to brute force, at least before heat death of the known universe. Lock it down. Security is complex. You want defense in depth. A password is something you know. Biometrics is something you are. Your fingerprint, your facial geometry. It lets you get in without having to type anything, but it can also be used against you. If you fall asleep, if you're rendered unconscious, if you're restrained, if your finger can be touched to the sensor, or likewise your face held up to the camera. If you're traveling in an area or going into or across a location you simply do not trust, you can temporarily disable biometrics at any time by holding down either volume button on one side and the side button on the other side of your iPhone. Squeeze for a second and you're back in pre-board mode. Nothing but your newly strong alphanumeric password will let you back in, or anyone else in for that matter. Keep holding it and it'll sound an alarm and call 911 or whatever the emergency number is in your area. If you're really concerned, you can even go into settings, touch ID or face ID and passcode and turn off biometrics altogether while you're crossing a border, while you're going through a security checkpoint or traveling through a potentially problematic area. Then, when you're done, you can re-register your fingerprint or face for everyday use again. You can also turn off autofill if you usually keep it on, so none of your data is offered up even if someone somehow gets to your phone unlocked. Two-factor. A password is something you know. Biometrics is something you are. Two-factor, a token, is something you have. By turning two-factor authentication on, you reduce the risk of someone breaking not into your phone, but into the data accounts you have on your phone. That includes iCloud, Google, Dropbox, everything like that. And it means if you made the mistake of using the same password for multiple services or using an easily guessable or researchable password, things you should never, not ever do, and someone gets a hold of it through hacking or social engineering, they still can't get into your account because they only have the first factor not the second. Now, not all two factors are created equally. Physical tokens like USB keys are the best, but not every service supports them. Virtual tokens like Google Authenticator or Authy are in the middle. SMS tokens are the worst. So bad, I'm always tempted to avoid them completely, just in case someone theoretically clones my SIM card somewhere. Somehow. If your service offers a physical or virtual token though, 
use it. You typically only have to enter it once per device or browser, but so will anyone else as well. And the odds are they just won't have it. I'll include links for how to set up two-factor on all the popular services in the description below. Back down. Backups are great. Everyone should have them, but they're better for keeping your data safe than keeping it secure. I already did an entire video explaining the difference between fail safe and fail secure, between people who need to protect their data from loss versus people who need to protect it from theft. So I'll link that below as well. For most people, most of the time, if you have no security concerns at all, just turn on automatic cloud backups and leave them on. If you're less worried about keeping copies of your photos and documents and more worried about someone else seeing copies of your photos and documents, then you're gonna to wanna to be much more careful about where and how you back up. When we talk about backing up to the cloud, the cloud really just means someone else's computer and a copy of your data on someone else's computer means theoretically someone else can get to it. If you want to avoid that, make local backups instead. It's not automatic. You'll have to set a reminder. It takes more work to do them and even more work to keep copies off site. But plugging your device into a computer and making an encrypted copy means no one else can go anywhere else to get that data. And even if they come to you without the password, all they'll get is pseudo random gibberish. Eternal vigilance. There's a lot more to security than just locking things down. It's less a state of data and more a state of mind. Never clicking on links you get in email or through messaging services. Never giving your passwords to technicians, real or pretend, on the phone or at service centers. Avoiding apps and services that want your logins both legitimately and as scams. It can be a real pain. It can cost you some real significantly convenient services. But once you know your own comfort level and threat level, you can make the best, most informed decisions for you. And if you want to know more about it, if you're curious about the core technologies behind encryption, behind biometrics, the algorithms and neural networks, but don't know where to start, don't worry. Brilliant's got you. It's a great place to learn about the logic and theory behind coding. They have a bunch of courses that teach you the fundamentals of computer science for those of you who are new to the field. Each course is interactive and breaks up complicated concepts into bite-sized chunks to make sure you'll actually absorb the information. It's a strategy I wish every school I'd ever been to used rather than three hour lectures that I just fell asleep during. Anyway, to learn all about it, just go to brilliant.org slash vector. Thank you so much, Brilliant. So those are a few things that you can do to lock down your devices, to make sure they are absolutely as secure as possible, to keep them in a state that even you can barely get into. Is that something you're interested in? Is it something that you do? Is it something that you occasionally do? Is it something you'll think about doing? Does it depend where you are, what you're doing? Hit like, hit subscribe, and then let me know in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching.